Loss and Shadow Written by Sherman Earl As told by Sherman Earl When I was a boy, I've always liked shadows. I don't know, it was just funny to me. The way how they move and twist and turn and always give this whole second worldly feeling to me. Often we appreciate shadows. That's why I always say it's better to have a shadow than be a shadow of yourself. Most of the time, people thought I was this weirdo, this kid that people never want to hang around with. So I was by myself. I had myself in my shadows. I mean, what's that most to think about? The shadows were the only thing that kept me company. And the only thing that made me feel whole, if you will. That was until I met this girl. She almost gave me this weird feeling. I also felt the rubber of her shoes. I could hear them squeak as she walks up to me. She then takes a seat right next to me. She had these light green eyes, soft but not too white skin. She had light red hair. And of course she had a smile that looks like it wasn't false. She was also wearing this black comb over. Whatever that is, I don't really don't know. I don't, I don't pay attention that much to girls' clothing. She also wore the she also wore this really short black skirt. She also had black leather boots, and she painted her nails black. She then looked at me and said, "Are you alone?" Obviously, I didn't want to say anything. I just wanted to be by myself and eat my lunch. But I said, "Yeah, why are you asking me that question?" She then smiled and said, "Well." I'm thinking maybe you might need some company. I'm Alice. Obviously, I didn't want to say anything at all. I just wanted to sit there and enjoy my lunch with my shadows, but something compelled me to say hello. Nice to meet you. And she got my hand and she shook mine. I'm Samuel. Nice to meet you, Samuel. So why are you sitting here by yourself? Alone, most people never just really understood me, you know what I mean? Yeah, I understand. We started talking for a little bit. I really love her company. She just always gives me this warm smile, despite the fact that she's always giving me this dark aura. My mom could always tell me that you can feel auras based on people's actions and senses. And for me, I can feel hers. It's dark, but there's also some light in there. It's almost as if the light is masking the dark, if you will. Almost as if she's hiding it just for show. Hey, wanna see something cool? She told me this, and of course she did through her bag. What? What do you want to show me? Look! In her bag, she did out and she grabbed a dead rat. Oh, God! What is that? I said to myself. I saw the blood come out of it, and it started twitching. Its eyes rolled up against its head, and it started gasping. She said, no, no, no! And she grabbed it and twisted its neck. You can hear the bones in its little body break. It's almost as if watching someone breaking a Kit Kat bar. Just in an instant. She then told me and said, this was my pet, but I had to kill it. I looked at her and I said, why? Because it was getting on my nerves. <laughs> this has to be some kind of joke, right? I said to her, why would you have a rat in your, in your bag, but you killed it? I don't know. Just killing small creatures is kind of fun. I wouldn't say I like it. Hurting small animals really isn't my cup of tea. But just hearing the bones break and shatter and just ooze all over the place really turns me on. What? I had to really think about what she had to say. As I had this long, awkward pause with her, the thing is, she likes hearing broken bones. It's almost as if she reminds me of that serial killer, but I can't remember who. I just laughed it off. Every person at least has one weird thing about them, but this is too weird for me. She then said, went ahead of my place, but we just met. I told her, don't worry about it. My mom knows. My mom knows I always bring company. Okay, I guess. I call my mom on, on, on the payphone. She picked up the phone. Hello? She said in her nice, sweet voice. Mom, it's me. Hey, um, hey Max. How you hanging? I'm doing good. My mom, of course, has early dementia. It really hurts me because I always keep telling her my name is Samuel, but it doesn't matter anymore. Just let her come at Max. I'm doing great, Mom. How about you? I'm doing great, sweetie. How are your grades doing? Is everything okay? 
Her sweet voice always calms me down, even in the darkest of rains and the stormiest of nights. I'm doing fine, Mom. I'm going to go over to a friend's house, okay? Friend? Who did you meet? Her name is Alice. She's really sweet. She kind of reminds me of you a little. <laughs> You're making me blush. Her laugh is just always so infectious. When I was first born into the world, I had this darkness. I never really cared for anybody or anyone, or even people for that matter. People just always get in the way. People are just hard to talk to. They're just like meat bags, just walking around with organs and blood and tissue and emotions and feelings. It's just so hard to try to go to one. As I said, it's better to just talk to shadows. At least when I talk to them, they answer back. They at least have somebody to talk to. But for my mom, she was always there for me. She was that little shining of rainbow that always helped me. Mom always told me to be positive about everything, saying that there's always light and shadow, but light overcomes the darkness. She always tells me that there is good in everything and that people are easy to talk to. You just got to find the ones you're willing to talk to. That's why every time I need someone to talk to, I always go to my mom. My father was a debt being an asshole anyway. He always hurt others for what he believed in. He also gave me bruises and marks all over my damn bed because the child services had to call and remove him. My mom fight for me to live with her and I live with her in custody. Me, of course, being 17 and it's almost graduation, I think it's about time I finally talk to someone. Yeah, mom, I'll be, I'll be back in an hour, okay? Okay, sweetie, but be careful. You don't know how dangerous it could be. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, you have a good time, okay? You too. I love you. I love you too, sweetheart. I had to hang up the phone. Ready to go when you are. Great. Come on. Uh, are we walking or? <laughs> Hell no. In this weather? No, thank you. But it's not raining. Right before I, right before I said that, a thunderbolt came down. Ooh. See what I mean? Weather. She didn't point it to him. She didn't point it to her bike, which is just, of course, the corner. Come on. I ran with her. So this is how you meet people? What? You just tell them that, hey, I kill animals and just join me for a little walk? Oh, very funny, Max. Very funny. How do you know that? I heard your conversation with your mom on the payphone. Man, you really love your mom, don't you? Of course. She was always there for me when nobody else wasn't. I can see that. But the thing is, you're going to get yourself in trouble one these days. What do you mean? Talking to family gets everybody hurt. Talking to anybody will get you hurt. And the thing is, I'm there for you whether you need me or not. Okay. <laughs> I really had to swallow that one. What the hell was she talking about? And how did she know my mom called me Max? I felt really weirded out, but then again, I am lonely for company. Here it is. She grabs, she grabs um, her little cover and whip it off. Whoa. Is that a mm -hmm, Bugatti 277? My dad gave it to me before he passed. Whoa, this is cool. Hey, that's not the best thing. She opens up the little flap. I have to, I have to see for a cockpit. You know what I'm saying? I have her put the cockpit on, and of course she gave me a helmet. Safety first. Uh-huh, safety. You should have told me that. You should have told me that before that lightning crack came down. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah, I can see that. She then turns on the, the bike, and here we go. Whoa, I hold on to my seat for dear life. This girl is crazy, but I love it. She drove so fast that I almost felt out, I almost felt the hair, which I don't have any hair anymore, feel like it was about to burst. She moved so fast and so quick that everything just felt like I was lifeless, weightless even. And it's almost as if the whole entire world was going by. You need some water? Yeah, thanks. She gave me a bottle of water and I had some. <sighs> thanks for that. No problem. Always willing, always willing to do something for a friend. As she drove down the um, drove down the line. Rock, 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 rock. I pointed out a rock. Hang on. Oh God. Mm -hmm. She kicked up the pressure. Wait, what are you doing? This is gonna be fun. No, no! 
I hold on and pretty, pretty much brace for if I die, at least I, at least I die knowing that I tell my mom I loved her. Oh God! Mm. You literally felt the engine and everything as we went right through the woods and I saw the sleep. It wasn't too big of a leap, but my God, it felt like I was going forever. And those five moments I thought I was going to die, everything was slow-mo. I saw the trees, I saw the river. I saw her smiling back at me. Whoa. And then, whoa. We both landed as hard as we could on the pavement. I, I'm alive? Well, duh, you're alive. I'm not going to kill you. Jeez, calm down. Mm -hmm. We're here. She didn't drive me all the way to her place. Whoa. Kind of gothic, don't you think? Yeah, but, but my parents like that stuff. Come on, I'll show you around. I looked up at her house. It had this French Middle Eastern type of approach to it. It was this really huge castle. It was black and white, but also with a little bit of teal, I guess, for color. It's almost as if I walked right into the Adams family. <laughs> Leave the theme song, if you will. But it felt just like it. I followed her right through. These, most of the time, these keys don't work. If it doesn't, I have a shortcut. She turned in, twisted the key. Bada boom, bada bing. We're in. She opens the door. And I looked inside. Whoa. It was almost as if I was in a haunted house. There was black lights and paintings. The lights wouldn't want to shine. It almost gives like this eerie feeling. Here, I'll, 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 I'll turn on some lights. She turned on the lights in the kitchen and in the living room. Whoa. That's huge. I... She did she put her finger over, over my lip. I know. I get that all the time. I was mostly staring at the dining room. The dining room was massive. It looks like this is a place fit for a king. 64, um, 64 chairs next right to a long table. A giant campfire sitting in the back. I know it's called, I, I know it's called, I know it's called a burning place, but I call it a campfire. Or is it a fireplace? Whatever. That's how I saw it. Big, beautiful chandeliers, paintings all over. And the sweet smell of honey roamed the scene. It was very intoxicating, but I had to shake my mind off it. I went, of course, into the, into the living room with her. She had a giant flat screen TV sitting on her wall. Lots of chairs, her own movie theater, which was pretty cool. Pretty cool. A popcorn maker by the left. And, of course, she sat by and said, come on, have a seat right next to me. She kind of down as we go to sit here. Well, this is, place is amazing. What do your parents do? Both my parents are architects, but my mom, my mom Marcy works in filmmaking. Wait a minute, you mean, yep. She pointed right to the picture on the wall. No way. Her mom is one of the most famous horror directors of all time. Memuel Vanelli. Mel now made some of the best horror cinema classics of all time, like Dating a Vampire, Two Ways Don't Make a Right, Blood and Bone, Separate in Between, and Bone Marrow. Some of the most iconic horror films of the modern decade. And yet it makes my, my spine shiver that I am right next to her daughter. Whoa. She didn't laugh and said, <laughs> yeah, I know, royalty, um, royalty goes in the family. What do you mean? Well, my mom was, was a director, so was her father, and her father's father, and their uncle, and his uncle. She goes on and said that she's connected the fifth generation of, of the family that is filmmaking. She also says that she's working so hard to get to get a scholarship in New Mexico City. I said, why New Mexico? New Mexico is working on a new on a new industry building. They're gonna call it the horror cinema on um, the horror cinema of the decade. It says it's gonna be one of the biggest, one of the smallest. And one of the hugest places of all time. And what blows me away is how impressive it is. She showed me a picture on, on the Mexico State website. Whoa, that's massive. Yeah, no kidding. But the thing is, I don't hope I have enough grades for it. What do you mean? You're probably an A student, right? No. She gave me these 
dejected eyes, almost as if almost if she's hiding something. Mostly, most of the time, I could at least make it to a B, but I've been feeling math. That's why, that's why I try to make friends with you. You need help with math? You could have just asked, you know. Why? I would, I would have been willing to help. But ever since you're the creepy guy, stay away from him. He'll make you feel moody. He'll make you feel horrible. Everybody says that? Yeah. Well, you know what I said to him? Fuck him. I don't know who I am. I just never liked people. Same. People are just always so weird. We both looked at each other with these eyes. This spark, if you will. Has this been the spark I'm looking for for all my life? We both looked at each other intensely. I... How can I say this? Say what? Were you the one that was looking for me? Wait, what? What do you mean? My mom always says that the universe conceives itself to help you find your true calling. Is this my true calling? Finding you? Really? Hmm. I don't know. But if it is, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> I leaned in and I kissed her. I felt her soft lips go against mine and I felt the spark. What? You may have felt that? Felt the same way? Of course I did. I... I just didn't want to stop you. Why? Because I'm getting feelings for you. And that's really hard, especially when the fact that I really just don't like people. But I'm not like other people. Maybe you're not. But I really do have that homework. Of course, no problem. But maybe... I have to just blow my kiss. Okay, lover boy. You're fine. I leaned her in closer. She leaned into me and we both kissed, and I felt her hands go up against my neck. Her hands shiver. I know most people say people can be cold, but whew. It almost felt it almost felt as if her hand was literally made of ice. When I kissed her, I felt everything. I felt emotions. Things I've never had before. Pain, love, endurement, anger, resentment, pain. It was all there as if just one little kiss was the big bang. The thing that made me who I am today. When we let go, the world just felt so much clearer. There was no more darkness. No more pain. No more suffering. Just bliss. Peace for the first time in a long time. There was finally peace on earth forever. Continuing part two.